Hello and welcome to Zero to Interview Hero Kubernetes course, where I am covering every Kubernetes chapter Q&A you need to know to confidently crack your interviews. With this course, you'll never skip a question in your interview on Kubernetes. Today, in chapter one, we will cover Kubernetes basic question and answers. So let's get started and make sure you're fully prepared for the interview. Starting with our first question. What is Kubernetes and why is it needed in modern infrastructure? Here's how you can respond. Kubernetes is an open source tool used to manage containerized application. It automates tasks like deploying, scaling, and restarting containers. In modern infrastructure where application runs in containers like Docker, Kubernetes is needed to handle large number of containers efficiently. It ensures high availability, better resource usage, and smooth updates, making it ideal for cloud environments. Moving on with our next question, what are containers and how do they differ from virtual machines? Here's how you can respond. Containers are lightweight, portable units that package an application along with everything it needs to run, like code, libraries, and dependencies. They run on a shared OS kernel, making them faster and more efficient than virtual machines. Virtual machines, on the other hand, include an entire operating system and virtual hardware, which makes them heavier and slower to start. In short, containers share the host OS and are lightweight. Virtual machines run separate OS instances and are heavier. Containers are preferred in modern DevOps for the faster deployment, testing, and development. Moving on with our next question. What are the benefits of using Kubernetes in a production environment? Here's how you can respond. In production, Kubernetes is very useful because first it keeps application highly available by restarting failed containers. Second, it auto scales based on the traffic. Third, it handles zero downtime updates using rolling deployment. Fourth, it self heals by replacing unhealthy containers. And fifth, it manages resources efficiently, reducing the cloud cost. Moving on with our next question What is the difference between Docker and Kubernetes? Here's how you can respond Docker is a tool used to create and run containers, which package applications with their dependencies. Kubernetes, on the other hand, is used to orchestrate and manage many containers across multiple machines. In simple terms, Docker creates and runs container, and Kubernetes manages and scales those containers in production. They often work together. Docker builds the container, and Kubernetes deploys and manages them. Moving on with our next question. What are the main components of Kubernetes architecture? Here's how you can respond. Kubernetes has two main parts, control plane and worker nodes. Control plane manages the cluster and it includes API server, scheduler, controller manager, etcd. Worker node run the actual application. It includes kubelet, kube proxy, and a container runtime. Together, they keep application running healthy and scalable. Moving on with our next question, explain the concept of a pod in Kubernetes. Here's how you can respond. A pod is the smallest unit in Kubernetes. It's like a wrapper around one or more containers that need to work together closely. All containers inside a pod share the same network namespaces, that is IP and ports. It can also communicate easily through local host and can also share storage volumes. Moving on with our next question. What is the Kubernetes cluster and how does it work? Here's how you can respond. A Kubernetes cluster is a group of machines that work together to run containerized applications. 
It has two main parts, control plane and worker node. Control plane is the brain. It makes decisions like scheduling apps, monitoring health and handling updates. Worker node, on the other hand, run the actual application inside pods. The control plane tells the worker nodes what to do and the nodes report back with the status. Together, they keep the application running, scaled and healthy. Moving on with our next question. What is a deployment in Kubernetes and how does it help in managing applications? Here's how you can respond. A deployment in Kubernetes is a controller that helps you manage your application's lifecycle. It allows you to define the desired state of your application, like how many pods to run. It also allows us to perform rolling updates without any downtime, as Kubernetes updates pod one by one. It also allows to roll back to the previous version if something goes wrong. In short, a deployment makes it easy to update, scale, and maintain our application reliably. Moving on with our next question. What is the role of a Kubernetes scheduler? Here's how you can respond. The Kubernetes scheduler is responsible for assigning newly created pods to the best fit worker nodes. It checks resources requirement like CPU and memory. It also checks the node availability and it also checks taints, tolerance and affinity rules. Based on these, it picks the most suitable node and schedules the pod there. This ensures efficient use of cluster resource and app performance. Moving on with our next question. What is a Kubernetes service and how does it ensure connectivity to pods? Here's how you can respond. A Kubernetes service is a stable way to connect to pods, even if the pods IP keeps changing. It acts as an abstraction layer that provides a fixed IP and DNS name, automatically routes traffic to the right pods using labels, and it also ensures load balancing across healthy pods. This way, applications can reliably talk to each other without worrying about pod restarts or IP changes. Moving on with our next question. What are labels and selectors in Kubernetes? And how do they help in managing resources? Here's how you can answer. Labels in Kubernetes are key value pairs attached to objects like pods and deployments. They help organize, group, and filter resources. Selectors are used to query or match these labels. For example, a service uses a selector to route traffic only to pods with a specific label. Together, labels and selectors make it easy to manage and target specific set of resources in a large cluster. Moving on with our next question, what are config maps and secrets in Kubernetes and how are they used to manage configurations? Here's how you can answer. Config maps and secrets are used in Kubernetes to manage configuration data separately from an application code. Config maps store non-sensitive data like application settings, URLs, or environment variables. Secrets store sensitive data like password, token, or key in a base64 encoded form for security. Both can be injected into pods as environment variables or mounted as files. It helps keep applications flexible, secure, and easy to update without rebuilding images. Moving on with our next question, what is a replica set in Kubernetes and how does it ensure the desired number of pod replicas? Here's how you can answer. A replica set in Kubernetes ensures that a specific number of pod replicas are always running. If a pod crashes or gets deleted, the replica set will automatically create a new one to maintain the desired count. This ensures high availability and reliability of the application. 
While you can use a replica set directly, it's usually managed by a deployment, which adds version control and rolling update on top. Moving on with our next question, explain the concept of namespaces in Kubernetes. Here's how you can answer. Namespaces in Kubernetes are like virtual clusters within a physical cluster. They help isolate resources like pods, services, and configs so teams or proje projects can work independently. For example, you can run dev, test, and production environment in the same cluster using separate namespaces. This keeps things organized, secure, and easy to manage. They are especially useful in large teams or multi-tenant setups. Moving on with our next question, what are taints and tolerations in Kubernetes and how do they work? Here's how you can answer. Taints in Kubernetes are used to mark nodes so that only certain pods can run on them. A tainted node says don't schedule any pods here unless they tolerate this taint. Tolerations are added to pods to let them bypass the taint and run on those nodes. This is useful for keeping dedicated nodes for special workloads like GPU tasks or high security apps. Moving on with our next question, how does Kubernetes handle persistent storage for containers? Here's how you can answer. Kubernetes uses persistent volumes and persistent volume claims to manage storage for stateful applications. A persistent volume is a piece of storage in a cluster provisioned by an admin or dynamically. A persistent volume claim is a request by a pod for storage specifying size and access mode. Pods use PVCs to get stable long-term storage even. If the pod is deleted or rescheduled, the data remains safe. This setup makes it easy to manage storage independently of the pod's lifecycle. Moving on with our next question, how does Kubernetes handle rolling updates and rollbacks? Here's how you can answer. Kubernetes handles rolling updates through the deployment object updating pods gradually to avoid downtime. It replaces old pod with the new ones one at a time, while keeping the app still running. If something goes wrong, you can quickly roll back to a previous stable version using a single command. This ensures zero downtime, controlled rollout, and safe recovery during application updates. Moving on with our next question, what is the role of an ingress in Kubernetes? Here's how you can answer. Ingress in Kubernetes is used to expose services outside the cluster using HTTP or HTTPS. It acts like a smart router that number one, routes incoming traffic to write service based on URL paths or host name. Number two, supports SSL termination. Number three, offer load balancing for better traffic management. With Ingress, you can manage access to multiple services through a single external IP, making it ideal for web apps and APIs. Moving on with our next question, what is the significance of auto-scaling in Kubernetes and how does it work? Here's how you can answer. Auto-scaling in Kubernetes helps application handle changing loads by automatically adjusting the number of pods. The most common is horizontal pod autoscaler, which scales pod up and down based on CPU, memory usage, or custom metrics. This ensures number one, better performance during high traffic, number two, cost saving during load usage, and number three, no manual scaling needed. Kubernetes constantly monitors metrics and adjusts pod count to match the demand, 
in real time. Moving on with our next question. What is the difference between stateful and stateless applications in Kubernetes? And how are stateful sets and deployments used to manage them? Here's how you can answer. In Kubernetes, stateless applications don't store data between sessions. Every pod is identical and replaceable. These are managed using deployments, which handle scaling and rolling updates easily. Stateful applications need to retain data and have stable identities like databases. These are managed using stateful sets, which ensures number one, persistent storage with stable volume, number two, consistent pod names and order, and number three, predictable network identities. So, use deployments for stateless application like web servers and stateful set for stateful application like MySQL, Kafka, or Redis. That is it for today. See you in the next one.